All Souls was one of the most important churches in the denomination, and his job there was enviable. But in the last two years of his life, Jim became restless. He felt the comfortable position at All Souls was in conflict with the values he preached. And in the turbulence of the early 60s, the beginning of the civil rights movement, he saw growing inequality and injustice all around. And so he made a surprising decision to leave All Souls and seek a new position where he could engage more directly with a community outside the church's walls. Ron Engel had a stack of letters Jim had written to him during this time. Here is when he was looking for a church. He had trouble communicating to the UUA Department of the Ministry that the, of what kind of church he wanted to serve. And he wrote, The Department of Ministry assures me they will get my name on list of desirable churches. If there is anything I'm not interested in, it is joining the list of those looking for desirable churches. <laughs> what the hell is a desirable church? I mean, here was the, the crux of the matter. Were we serious about uh, what kind of a religious and political community we were seeking to, to nurture? After months of searching, Jim began to feel that really any church— with its institutional structures and administrative responsibilities, would interfere with the community organizing he felt called to. So he took a job in Boston with the American Friends Service Committee, working on low-income housing issues out of a storefront office in the city's majority black Roxbury neighborhood. It was important to Jim to live in the same place where he worked, to raise his family there, to send his kids to the local schools. Okay, here's one about when they were looking for the house. This is the fall of 1964. It took me many days of looking to find this house. It is three floors, 11 rooms and full basement, plus a vacant lot across the street. It was difficult to find this house. Almost no one wants to encourage you to move here. One lady asked me if I was crazy when I told her I really wanted to move into the neighborhood. Then he goes on to say the children are in school and in general happy. John wanted to help to integrate his class. Some gal in Washington wanted to know if I really wanted my children to go to school with Negroes, and I said, yes, of course. All children are lucky who integrate schools. Marie is fine, busy getting the house in order. I am faced every day to stretch my mind. There are new problems, new ideas, and new experiences to deal with. I have seized the bull by the horns. I am doing what seems important, and let the damn torpedoes come. Wow. That's something else. It is. It's I really I, I feel it's I must say on a personal level, like having worked on this story about him for so long, this is kind of the first time I've ever felt in his presence to some extent. It's a it's a kind of a peculiar feeling, really. Andy, that's uh, that's that, that, let me just go on. Here is Jim. We have a challenge to meet as a family. We are together sharing in what I think will probably be one of the most significant times in our lives. We are all amazingly well, and I am spending more time with the family than ever before. We have finally got our ping pong table, and Marie, John, and I play regularly. We are resuming our Friday night birthday festival. We have a cake, candles, someone tells us about a person, we admire, and we sing happy birthday. Wow. We think of you and are grateful for your friendship across the miles, Jim, Marie, and the Indians. Wow. Yeah. So that's that was the Jim. I mean, that was the yeah. the Jim Reeve that we all. Uh, there you are.